Hey guys, I thought this week I would do something different. So instead of the normal vlog where I take you along with me and Jack and show you the places that we go and do little nice shots of my feet and the takeaway coffees that we have, I would do a more traditional old school video just talking. So I did a shout out on Twitter and Instagram and you came back with some really cool ideas so this video is inspired by those. And I just want to say before I start that all of these views are completely mine, 100% subjective and yeah. I'm going to talk today about things that I wish I had known before becoming a mother. I was basically quite clueless. I'd read a couple of vlogs, I'd watched a couple of vlogs, but I didn't do any reading of any of the traditional books. And I just sort of went into it quite open-minded. And yeah, I learned quite a lot, I feel. So this video is a couple of home truths. Some good, some bad. Let's get going. Number one. Eleven. Giving birth, and I'm talking more about the sort of normal vaginal birth rather than a c-section, is a massive ordeal, okay? Emotionally, mentally, physically. No one tells you these things before you have the baby. When you're pregnant, everyone's like, amazing, rightly so. But they don't tell you that afterwards you may well not be able to walk properly for a couple of days, or you might have heavy bleeding, or you might be incontinent. Like, it's a massive thing for your body to go through to produce another human being. And afterwards, you know, you are a bit of a wreck, you're exhausted, you might be really bruised, lots of things can happen to you. I particularly had a very long, hard labour, and I'll pop a link to my birth story below, but I've spoken to quite a few ladies and lots of them feel quite, I don't want to use the word, but traumatised after their birth. So just try and remember that it's a massive thing bringing someone else into the world and you kind of feel quite weak and crummy afterwards. Number two, and this one's a bit more positive. The love that you feel for your baby is just out of this world huge. I had no idea that it was going to be like this. And what's so amazing is that it grows. So literally every day I feel like I'm falling more and more in love with Jack. At the beginning you have the baby, amazing, you've got this thing, you love it, yeah. Um, it keeps growing your love for them, especially I think if your partner, particularly if you're breastfeeding in the beginning, I feel like Sam's bonding with Jack more and more every day. Some days where I feel like I spend most of the day just giving Jack kisses on his cheek or like sometimes I feel like I hug him so much that I might be hurting him, I'm not, but you know what I mean. Number three, everything is a phase with your little one. Someone gave me this piece of advice and I actually think it's my favourite piece of advice. It can be a good thing, can be a bad thing. Like Jack, for example, was sleeping really quite well at the beginning and I thought, yes, great, he's a sleeper, five months, everything went to pot and he started waking up like 10 times the night. Same with food, you think, okay, it's great, it's great, he's eating really well. Suddenly just stops eating and everything changes again. Nothing is predictable, it's all just a phase and there's no pattern, they're just babies, they're tiny and yeah, it's changing all the time and so when things are really bad, it's quite good to remember that. And when things are good, it's quite good to just remember that so you can appreciate when things are going really well. Number four, talking of sleep. My advice to mums, and I don't follow this myself, so I'm not quite sure I'm advocating it, is go to bed early. It's really hard to do because at night when your little one is asleep, you think, yes, okay, I've got this time, stay up, sort things, tidy, watch telly, read, and then the night just goes. And then you get exhausted because looking after a baby is so physically demanding and emotionally but I find mainly physically like constantly watching over this other person it uses so much energy and you need to look after yourself and get enough sleep I also find that it accumulates so even if one night you get a lot of sleep and the next day you're like yeah I feel great if you don't continue in the cycle it catches up with you I also went through a phase of going out loads with Jack till quite late not late but just having long days and I would just be a wreck the next day. And then that has implications on Sam. And so it's not fair on other people around you. I really think it's so important to take responsibility and get yourself to bed early. I really, really need to be better at this. Number five, talking of taking responsibility. When you have a baby, you change. You just do. People say all the time, oh my gosh, it's going to change your life. That's kind of annoying. But as a person, you change. I, for example, have become way more organized. I am not an organized person, at least I wasn't before having Jack, but I think it's because with a baby you've really got to think ahead, especially maybe when they're eating, you think where's the next meal, 
and it just changes you, but it changes you for the better. I have, I think, become a better person. I've met so many brilliant people through YouTube and the blogging community who are awesome. Offline, when I'm just walking the street, people come up to you and talk to you and your life suddenly becomes a bit different because you connect with different people and you forge bonds with different people. And also the people already in your life, I feel like I've become even closer with them because you've got this amazing new thing to bond over. Number six, having a baby does not change you. Okay, as I said before, and this may seem like a contradiction to the previous point, everyone talks about, oh my gosh, it changes you. It does, but it doesn't have to change the person that you are. But I think you have to make an effort to be like that. So we always go out and about and still see our old friends and I get on the tube with Jack and I go and I make an effort to still keep those connections, but it, it doesn't have to change your life completely. Everyone always jokes that Jack's like my best friend and he kind of is because I haven't changed. He just comes along too. For example, also like I've started my YouTube channel so that I can have a place where I'm myself. Number seven, talking of going out, get out there and have fun and enjoy the freedom I think that having a baby gives you. I never imagined it to be this much fun and just to be able to go and explore the city and take Jack to new, wonderful, beautiful places, even if it's just for five minutes up the road or if it's across the other side of this country, just get out there and experience everything you can with your little one and have fun with it. Number eight, follow your instinct when bringing up your little one. I, as I said, haven't read any of the books. I've just completely gone with my gut. And I'm sure if I'd have read books, things may have been different. But as it is, I'm so happy that I've done it this way. For example, a lot of the books talk about routine or a lot of the books talk about taking your baby to classes to stimulate them. I haven't done either of those things. And that's just because I've done what feels natural to me, which is if I need to go to the supermarket in the morning, then Jack just comes too and he sleeps when we get back. And just things like that, that I've really done through just following my instinct. Number nine, don't go crazy buying loads of things for your baby before it arrives. When you're pregnant, everyone says, oh my gosh, I'll send you my list of the essentials. And in fact, some people suggested that I do an essential list of things to have when you have a baby. I thought about it. I could think of one thing, um, which is a bib that Jack um, has for when he eats that just covers his body and it's just really random. But I couldn't think of any, any essentials that you really need. You learn as you go along. So we, for example, have only just bought a baby monitor just because up to this point, if he cries, we've always just heard him and just gone to him. I haven't seen the need for the baby monitor. I know that's quite controversial. But also there's loads of amazing secondhand sites and shops out there. You get given loads of gifts. Nothing is that essential that when you order on Amazon, it doesn't come in the next day or two. So you can always get your hands on things. But my advice is just to wait and learn as you go and see what you need along the way. And number 10, finally, last but definitely not least, happy mummy, happy baby, i.e. do what works for you. If it works for you to put your little one in front of the TV for an hour every day, do it. If that's what's gonna make you happy, because when you're happy, your baby will be happy. I didn't really understand that phrase before I had Jack, but now I see the difference in when I'm a little bit grumpy versus when I'm really happy and then I'm really embraced and I love every minute of being his mum. But when things make me a bit unhappy, that's when you start to feel a bit, uh. <laughs>